This is Kevin McMurray with TrackingSharks.com, and today we're covering all publicly reported fatal shark attacks in the year 2023. The first known fatal shark attack of 2023. Manuel Lopez, 53, was scuba diving in Tobera Bay, Mexico. Lopez was collecting Axe Trip, which is a mollusk normally collected by the diver via a surface air supply. Surface supplied air is essentially a scuba setup, but without tanks. Instead, a compressor pumps air to the diver via a collection of hoses connected to the diver along with ropes. In this area, the diver searched the seafloor at a depth of 36 to 59 feet, 11 to 18 meters, and sometimes pull the boat along the surface using their supply lines. The mollusks are pulled from the ocean floor, which generates turbulence and sounds that could attract sharks. Most divers wear black wetsuits and may appear to be sea lions, which is a major food source for white sharks. My sources said Lopez was diving in the open ocean around 11.30 a.m. January 5th with two people on board his boat when he was attacked by a white shark. Quote, he was diving when the animal attacked him, impressively ripping off his head and biting both shoulders. End quote. Joseph Burnell, who represents the fishermen, said. He went on to say the local divers had been warned about the presence of sharks in the area and most had not been out for several days. Thousands of fishermen have been staying on shore due to the presence of large white sharks. A stipend of 7,200 pesos per year is available to fishermen to supplement their income. However, the amount is not livable when there is no money coming in from fishing. The shortage of the seafood has apparently created a demand in the good, and with his economic future at stake, Lopez chose to dive. White sharks are most prevalent in the Sea of Cortez, a.k.a. the Gulf of California, during the months of December and January when pregnant females enter the area. The sharks will often search for fat-filled sea lions to feed upon due to their high caloric count. Several fishermen have stated that they have inadvertently caught sea lions in their fishing nets. In several cases, when they have a sea lion, white sharks will often come to their boats as they are pulling in their nets. The sharks will hang around until the sea lions are released and then feed or hunt the pinniped, leaving the nets and boats alone. Some fishing organizations are calling for the government to purchase shark shields or other devices that emit electrical impulses that have been shown to deter white sharks. In addition, some local biologists have recommended divers not wear black wetsuits as they can make the wear look like a seal. They have also suggested painting white stripes on the suits and the pattern of the poisonous coral snake. Another recommendation is to wear a second scuba mask on the back of the head. The theory behind this is sound. Since sharks are ambush predators, they could be less likely to strike if the intended prey were watching them. The second fatal shark attack took the life of Stella Berry in Australia. A 16-year-old girl was killed in Swan River at North Fremantle, Western Australia. The girl was with a group of jet skiers February 4th when she and her friends spotted dolphins swimming near the old Fremantle Bridge. Around 3.30 p.m., several members of the group entered the water to swim with the dolphins. They were then seen swimming rapidly to shore. Police received an emergency call stating a female was injured near Doppel Street around Sorrell Park. A witness, who wishes to remain anonymous, said she heard kids screaming and saw a man jump in the water to save the teen. She described the man as a hero. The 16-year-old had severe injuries to her legs. Police boats arrived in the area and one was seen in front of an apartment block on the river bank with officers setting up a white partition to block the view of the public. Just before 6 p.m., police confirmed the girl had died at the scene. The third fatal shark attack of 2023 occurred in New Caledonia. Chris Davis, 59, was swimming in a cordoned off area at Royal Castle, February 19, when witnesses said he began struggling. The father of three was near a swimming platform around 4 p.m., when a suspected tiger shark attacked. Video from the beach shows bathers frantically exiting the water as the man appeared to fight the shark. Web cameras show rescuers on jet skis collect the man 
and take him to the beach. A bystander filmed the rescuers pulling the man off the jet ski as they administered first aid and CPR. Unfortunately, Davis succumbed to the injuries and was declared dead. Witnesses describe seeing the man in a large pool of blood, and video shows injuries to his legs and arms. It is possible the shark first grabbed his leg, and his arms were injured as he attempted to fight off the shark. A 13-foot tiger shark was captured by authorities who believe the shark may have been responsible for the attack. Parts of a man were recovered in a possible scavenging event in Argentina. Diego Beria, 32, left his home on Saturday, February 18th, around 9 p.m. on his all-terrain vehicle. The experienced off-roader was planning to ride through Rocos, Colorado. Beria was familiar with the area, which may be why he chose to drove through it at such a late hour. The avid 4x4 and fisherman called his partner to let him know he met some friends and would be late coming home. Because he knew the area very well, she wasn't concerned when he didn't return home that night. However, by the next day, she was concerned. Police were notified, and locals banded together to look for the oil worker. The area is so rough, police requested members of the off-road community and those with 4x4s to assist with the search, along with several air searchers. Two days later, Beria's wrecked ATV was found on a beach with severe front-end damage. His cracked helmet was found a few feet away, but it's unknown if he removed it or if it was thrown off in the crash. Eight days later, two fishermen were at the same beach where Beria's glasses were found. The anglers landed three school sharks, and as they were cleaning the sharks around 1.20 a.m., they came across a human arm. They quickly notified local authorities. Various family members were called to the scene and were able to identify the appendage as barriers based on a tattoo on the arm. The other two sharks were dissected, but contained no other remains. The appendage was taken to the judicial morgue where a DNA comparison test will be performed. Commissioner Christian Anslode said, quote, One of the strongest hypotheses is that he collided with a rock and the body was carried away by the sea but we are going to handle all the hypotheses with the evidence found in the place. That day, there was a tidal wave, end quote. He added that the vehicle will be analyzed to establish how the accident happened and believes the ATV, which was found further inshore from the water's edge, may have been moved by the waves. School sharks are known to be relatively harmless to humans. It is quite plausible Beria was deceased or unconscious from the crash and was washed into the water by waves. It is also possible he survived the crash and walked to the ocean inadvertently or purposefully to clean himself off and was washed away. It was dark and his helmet showed massive trauma. Let me know your theory in the comments. A diver has died after being attacked by a shark in Cuba. Alejandro Jimenez was spearfishing May 9th in an area known as Oja de Tabarun. The avid fisherman was with several friends diving from a boat, which may have been shark fishing. As he was diving for a fish, he was bitten by a bull shark. Friends attempted to save him, but the wounds were too severe, and Jimenez died. A 46-year-old teacher was killed in a shark attack May 14th at Walker's Rock Beach in South Australia. Simon Bacanello was with other surfers, including children, when a large shark was spotted just before 10 a.m. A good Samaritan on the beach spotted the shark and began honking his horn to alert those in the water to come to shore. Bacanello saw the suspected white shark in the water and told young surfers not to worry and to swim back the roughly 100 feet back to shore. A witness saw what he estimated to be a 10-foot-long shark with a white underbelly swimming amongst the surfers before it attacked Bacanello from behind, dragging him underwater. Quote, I saw a large shark swimming near the shore. It was at least three meters long, and it had a white underbelly. It attacked the man from behind and dragged him underwater, end quote. A witness who asked not to be identified stated, quote, There was a bloke on the beach tooting his horn, and as I turned around, I saw everyone paddling in, end quote. Jaden Miller told Adelaide Now, quote, I saw his board tombstoning, which means he's underwater and his board's getting dragged under. Trying to fight his way back up to the surface, He was gone. We saw the shark just thrashing around out the back. The shark obviously let go and came back and got him for a third time. 
end quote, police were called to the scene but only located the surfboard, which had a bite mark in the middle, pieces of styrofoam, and pieces of a wetsuit as they washed ashore. Authorities believe any remains would be washed ashore rather than out to sea, indicating the shark may have fully consumed the body. Based on his love and care for his students, it is possible Bacanello focused on their safety over his own and intentionally stayed at the end of the pack so they could arrive to shore safely. A spear fisherman was killed by a shark in New Caledonia. Very little information has come out about the case, other than the man was familiar with the area. A Samoan man trying to help his community was killed by a shark in the Samoan Islands. Locals from the village Asaga spotted a dead beaked whale August 12th floating in the water. Many of the locals took videos of the carcass before it floated onto the beach the following day, which is Father's Day in the islands. Quote, we don't know if it was swept over to our shores by the current or whether Asaga, the village right next to us, dragged it out to the ocean and it ended up here, end quote, an anonymous villager said. Amani Malulu heard the complaints of the locals who were repulsed by the smell of the dead well. Being a Samoan, Malulu decided to take the well out to sea. It is unknown why he did not use his canoe, instead opting to use his snorkel gear and fins to swim the dead well away from the coast. Video from the scene shows many happy villagers watching Lulu as he swims next to the dead well, smiling and waving back to his friends. Unfortunately, a short time later, the father of five was attacked by a shark. Witnesses reported seeing blood and splashes as one or more sharks struck. He was collected by canoe and taken to shore and then transported to the hospital, where he was declared dead. A swimmer was killed by a shark in Egypt. Vladimir Popov, 23, was visiting the country June 8th with his father and girlfriend. The Russian citizen, who had been living in Egypt for several months, his girlfriend and another friend entered the water near Dream Beach to relax when a tiger shark showed up. His girlfriend and the other friend swam roughly 22 feet back to shore. Unfortunately, the tiger shark attacked Popov, grabbing his leg. A bystander filmed the horrific attack, which shows Popov calling for his father as he was being pulled underwater with both legs kicking frantically above the water surface. The footage is available in our YouTube channel, but viewer discretion is advised. Rescuers quickly boated to the scene, but the shark struck multiple times until Popov disappeared completely beneath the water. Shocking video showed his headless torso being pulled from the water by his severely injured legs. Photographs of his body showed severe injury to the legs above the thigh, where the legs connected to the torso and a missing head. A swimmer was killed in California. A much-loved windsurfer was killed in a shark attack in California. Felix Louise Naja, 52, was attending a wedding when he and around 15 others decided to camp in Port Reyes, after the ceremony. Their group hiked around six to seven miles to an area known as Wildcat Beach. Three of the party decided to have a swim October 1. Nigel was in chest-to-shoulder high water about 25 to 50 yards from shore when a reported great white shark breached the water around 10.40 a.m. and grabbed Nigel's head. Screams were reported as he disappeared under the water and witnesses described seeing several splashes. The U.S. Coast Guard initiated a search, which was called off around 22 hours later, with no signs of the San Francisco resident found. Authorities said that swimming is generally discouraged in the area due to rough water. The surfer was killed by a white shark in Australia. Todd Gendel, 55, was surfing November 2nd south of Streaky Bay in South Australia. There were 8 to 10 other people in the water with him off Granite's Beach. Quote, the guy just caught a wave and started paddling back out, a witness told ABC News. He said Gendel was about 32 feet away from another surfer when, quote, he got knocked off his board by the shark and then it circled back around and grabbed him, end quote. The witness who has surfed the same area and has had white sharks swim under him said the shark thrashed Gendel before taking him underwater. Another witness said the shark brought Gendel to the surface before submerging with him a second time. Jeff Smuck saw the commotion and jet skied to the location and grabbed the empty surfboard. Witnesses pointed out the location of the attack, and Schmuck drove to the site and turned off his ski. Quote, within a minute, a great white of 14 feet or so appeared. End quote. He said, he followed the shark as it circled six or seven times. Its dorsal fin was so close, 
He could have touched it as it breached the water, but he saw no signs of Gendel. Quote, it could have been more than one shark there. I've seen five great whites in the water at once on one particular occasion, so you can't count out the fact that there could have been more than one shark there. End quote. Police searched the area multiple times, but only located small items. A female diver was killed by a shark at Tiger Beach in the Bahamas. On November 21, 2023, a 47-year-old female German tourist who was on a shark dive in the area disappeared around 10.30 a.m. Witnesses reported seeing the woman surface alone as the water turned red, screaming that she had been bitten by a tiger, before apparently being drugged underneath the water. Rumors indicate the woman was on a liveaboard dive boat with her husband, and it's unknown why she surfaced alone. The most common method of diving at Tiger Beach has divers placed in a semicircle on the bottom of the sea floor. Safety divers guide sharks away from the backs of the divers who focus on the bait baskets and the feeding of the sharks. Divers are also normally warned to head to the bottom once they enter the water and to not stay on the surface as you are vulnerable there. It is possible the diver panicked, felt uneasy, or simply decided to surface. It is unknown if the woman was bitten on the bottom or on the way to the surface. Searchers scoured the area for her body, but only recovered pieces of her shark-damaged dive gear, including one scuba fin. A woman trying to protect her daughter was killed by a shark in Mexico. Maria Fernandez Martinez Jimenez, a 26-year-old mother, lost her life on December 2nd. Jimenez was swimming with her child off Malek Beach in Mexico. The aspiring marine biologist was swimming near inflatable water rafts when she spotted a shark. She was bitten on the left side as she rushed to put the child on the inflatable and kept it from harm's way. Despite her brave act of placing her five-year on an inflatable swim platform, Martinez suffered a severe leg wound near the hip. Rescuers swiftly collected the pair, but unfortunately, Martinez was declared deceased on the beach. Photos from the scene show the mother's leg was severed. According to my sources, a fisherman reported seeing a shark earlier in the day and reported it to police, but the information was not given to the proper departments. The next fatal shark attack takes us back to the Bahamas. Lauren Erickson Van Wart, 44, was with her newlywed husband December 4th at the Sandals Beach Resort in Nassau. The pair were paddleboarding nearly a mile away from the shore, possibly to a private island, that guests would often travel to. Around 11.15 a.m., she was attacked by a shark, sustaining severe injuries to her right hip region and right upper arm, resulting in extreme blood loss. It is unknown if she was knocked into the water or was swimming or relaxing in the water when the shark struck. A lifeguard heard her screams and quickly came to the aid of the couple by boat. Unfortunately, despite the lifeguard's swift rescue efforts, CPR, and other first aid, Van Wart was declared dead. Video of a single bloody paddleboard was taken, showing the paddleboard being circled by a juvenile tiger shark, which surfaced multiple times and opened its jaws. It is unknown if the couple may have been sharing a board, if one of the boards was collected, or if it was damaged in the shark attack and sunk. Back in Mexico, a man was killed by an aquatic animal. Joseph Bynes, 76, was in the water on December 13th in Ixtapa. A video from the scene shows the man being attacked in the water around 9.20 a.m., but it is unclear by what. Witnesses reported Mr. Bynes' femoral artery was punctured and was declared deceased on the beach. Several crocodiles have been spotted in the area. However, around five minutes before the attack, a woman was confirmed to have been bitten by a shark in the same area. Back in Australia, a teen was killed by a shark. Kai Cowley 15, was enjoying the waves on December 28th off Ethel Beach with his dad. Around 1.30 p.m., a large white shark was spotted. Tim Phillip, a witness to the incident, describes the frantic efforts to save Kai. Standing on a cliff face, he noticed the teenager in trouble and rushed towards the beach. From the rocks, he saw Kai's father desperately yelling at his son to swim toward him. Phillip grabbed a stranger's surfboard and paddled out to reach Kai, who was unconscious. However, his efforts were thwarted when the suspected great white shark, approximately 13 feet long, began circling them. Quote, then it started to head back out to sea. I was in waist-deep water and just made the decision to run back, grab him, and manage to drag him back to shore. 
back to the people on the beach. It was just a matter of, I didn't want to see his body out to sea, so I did what he could. End quote, Philip told Seven News. He was able to pull the young man to the beach where paramedics arrived. The teenager had suffered a significant bite, which may have severed his leg, leading to extinguination. Friends and family of Kai have posted heartfelt tributes on social media, expressing grief over the loss of a young surfer with, quote, so much potential, end quote. A man was killed by a shark in Hawaii. A currently unidentified man was killed around 11.12 a.m. December 30th. A Maui Police Department spokesman said its officers responded to the beach area of 93 Hana Highway, where Maui Fire and Ocean Safety officers already had removed the victim from the water via a jet ski. The man was taken to Maui Memorial Medical Center and declared deceased. Our thoughts and prayers are with the families of all those affected by these tragedies. If you enjoy this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Support us directly by joining as a YouTube member. Check us out on Facebook or your favorite social media at Tracking Sharks. Thank you for watching and get wet soon. Here's to a better 2024.